<clears throat> okay, in this video here, uh, we're going to be looking at uh, <clears throat> working with an ellipse again. And we're going to be looking at finding the equation for an ellipse. And we're going to find it in general form, uh, given some information about the ellipse. So we look at the information that's given to us. It says the foci are at, oops, pardon me, this is supposed to be positive 3 here. Uh, 0, 3, neg and 0, negative 3. And the center is at the origin. And we have a major axis of 20. So we know that the, this point here, 0, 3, and 0, negative 3, put the ellipse in the vertical state. Right here we have 0, 3. Here we have 0, negative 3. Here's our center at 0, 0. So if we had axis would look like that. Okay, and then we know that the major axis has a length of 20. So knowing that, we know that the length from A to a vertice, or the edge of the ellipse, is, is going to be half of that. So it's going to be 10 up here. So if I put, that's going to be 0, 10. And this here is going to be 0, negative 10. Okay. And that's kind of going to give us our ellipse general shape there. Now, when we're working through this, <coughs> when we're working through this, pardon me there, that was just a little interruption. When we're working through this, we're going to be looking at uh, trying to find out the values A, B, and C for the ellipse and putting them in the proper position. So we know for an ellipse that the relationship between C, A, and B is that C squared is equal to A squared minus B squared. Okay, not the Pythagorean theorem, but just the relationship between the, the variables in an ellipse. Um, so that means that we can calculate, we know that C stands for the foci points, and that A stands for the vertices points from the center. So the foci points here, easily, we can see that C squared in our, in our case, C is 3. A, in our case, is 10. And B squared is unknown. So we can rearrange this and say that B squared, if we bring it over here, is equal to 100 for 10 squared minus 9 for uh, 3 squared. So this is going to be that B squared is equal to, well, 91. Or in our case, b is equal to 90, root 91. Okay. So out here, root 91, which if we work that out, it's uh, almost 10, but not quite. It's, it's almost a circle, but not quite. So out here is where b is, and, and, b, and the two b's there is going to be root 91 negative and 0, and out here is going to be 0 and root 91. So that, now that we have that, we can calculate our equation. So we can put it in the standard form of the equation. So we know a, b, and c. So we know it's a vertical ellipse, so that y has the larger value underneath it, y squared, because there's it's y minus k, but k is 0 because it's at the origin. So it's just going to be y squared over a squared plus x squared. Again, because there's a 0 for the center point, it's not x minus h squared because it's 0 over b squared is equal to 1. So in our case, that's just y squared equal to a 10 squared plus x squared is equal to 91 root 91 squared equals 1. So if we work that out here, and I'm just going to move this onto a second sheet. If we work that out, we get y over 100 plus x, or y squared, x squared over 91 equals 1. So then we have to come up with a multiply by a common denominator, 9100 there. 
So we end up getting 9100 y squared over 100 plus 9100 x squared over 91 equals r9100. So then we can divide out, we get 91y squared plus 100x squared equals 9100. Bring this over to the other side and arrange it in the proper order to get our general form of the equation. And this would be the equation of the ellipse. Okay, now if there if it wasn't centered around the zero zero, we would have of course an x and y component to that as well. And that's the uh, method you would use there.